Be careful with the water. If you throw it, it's going to burst. Tony, how many boxes on the pallet? 80 on the pallet. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. It's been almost a month since the winter storm hit Jackson, and there are still people in the city that don't have clean or usable water. So there have been several water distribution efforts throughout the city. Today, we're going to follow these volunteers and community leaders who are actually delivering water to people who need it. How many people do you think that this will cover? We're at three pallets, which is 240 boxes of water. So 240 residents for the first load. Not everyone is um, fortunate to have transportation to get out. And during the pandemic and also during the water crisis, many of the elderly um, and just poor people don't have transportation. So what do you think about the fact that the community is coming together to kind of take care of each other? Well, we understand that we can't wait on the government to come and save us, right? And determine how we're going to live, if, if we're going to survive. So we decided that we're going to save ourselves. The winter storm that got national attention for knocking out Texas's power grid also left nearly 40,000 residents in Jackson, Mississippi and surrounding areas without water for almost three weeks. Water has since been restored to most residents, but nearly 70% of the city is still under a boil water advisory. There's no timeline for when the water will be safe again to use. So, so good. Won't be light on no more. Oh, won't be mistreated. Won't be mistreated no more. The couple of weeks have been kind of hard, but we made it. Good prayer. And everybody bringing us water and everything, but we get, we got we did okay. Mm-hmm. The water is on. I was been washing the dishes, but but we can't use it, so we have to. I boil my water and put a little Clorox in it mm. to sanitize it to wash my dishes. This water right here is that I take a, a shower or a bath in, wash my face, brush my teeth. Wow. Mm-hmm. There has been no federal disaster declaration in Mississippi. Despite repeated pleas to the state for help by Jackson's mayor, very little has been done. It's Shokwe, Shokwe Lumumba. How you doing? I'm doing well. I wanted to bring you some more water. Okay. okay. All right, where would you like for me to Just put it? Just sit right there. Okay. Thank you. For now, the city has to make do with whatever limited resources are available. Do you think that Jackson was prepared for a storm of that magnitude? Uh, well, I, I, we weren't ill-prepared. We were ill-equipped. No matter how much, you know, preparation uh, we tried to, to uh, wage in terms of making our residents aware, uh, you know, our systems are our systems. Jackson's water system has been on the decline for decades. The city relies on two aging water treatment facilities one of which is over 100 years old and has limited funds for replacement. Jackson is scraping by on a $300 million budget, yet officials say it will cost roughly $2 billion to solve its overall infrastructure problems, with an estimated $1 billion alone needed to fix the lingering water crisis. Whose job is it to kind of come in and fix this? What will it take to get the system where it needs to be so that this doesn't happen again? Well, it's a shared responsibility. Uh, you know, it is my responsibility as mayor, uh, and we invest millions of dollars each and every year in order to support our water infrastructure. That not only is it the responsibility of city leadership, but is the responsibility of state leadership to help support the city of Jackson. The city supports the state of Mississippi. However, our support back is not commensurate. And so we need more than just immediate money. We need a line of funding that helps support the things that we're dealing with. But if this has been going on for so long, then why do you think the state is not responding? I think we'd be less than honest if we didn't say that issues of race are not prevalent. Uh, uh, it has been a tone deaf response. Each and every year we put in our legislative package our need to, to have resources to support this. And you think that this is falling on deaf ears because this is a city that's 85 percent black? I think that that I think that that is a contributing factor, right? I think that is a contributing factor. And if you don't have people in the decision-making process uh, that relate to the struggles of our community, then it often leads us uh, on the short end of the stick. 
The tax coffers in Mississippi's blackest city have dwindled along with its white population over the past 30 years. Here, flight to the burbs is real. White residents made up over 40% of the population back in 1990. And now, the roughly 17% that remains of Jackson's white population live predominantly in the city's affluent north side neighborhoods. We've been seeing reports that there are white suburban areas of the city that aren't facing the same issues as far as water is concerned as the more urban areas. Why, why is that? The reality is that most homes, white and black, suffer from it. However, the issues of equity and race are, are real issues. The water moves through the system as the pipes were laid. And so people who could afford to pay the premium to live closest to those resources did so. The reason South Jackson is challenged in the way that it is is because it's furthest from the plant. You know, it's at higher elevation, right? So it takes more to get it from point A to point Z. What happens if there is another decrease? Uh, that if there isn't a significant advancement of, of support, uh, then the likelihood is that, that we will suffer this sometime again in the near future. Vice News reached out to Mississippi Governor Tate Reeves, but did not hear back. What's to come weighs heavy on the minds of residents in areas like South Jackson, who've historically endured the brunt of the city's infrastructure woes. While waiting for help, they've been forced to find ways to survive without the most basic of needs. Uh, I'm a 26-year-old father of two. I uh, currently work at a warehouse right now, and I've been a resident of South Jackson this park for like 20 plus years, so this is kind of where I call my home. We didn't have water for about a week and a half, and now even though that the water is back, it's it doesn't really have many uses besides really the toilet like that anyway, because we're on a boil water notice. We still have to buy a lot of bottled water. Is this the first time that you guys have dealt with water issues here? Um, not really. Normally, every time it gets cold, I like the infrastructure so bad. Every time it gets cold, like below 30, I'd say, there's always water mains breaking and people losing power. When you guys were without water, where were you getting water from, like different um, there's a There's then? a creek in the backyard, actually, and some of the water in there didn't freeze all the way. So we were actually having to take buckets and fill up garbage cans. Is that a far walk? Uh, it's not that far, but when everything is covered in ice, mm. it was a very tedious process, especially when you're carrying buckets full of water yeah. and you're trying to keep your balance. So this is the act, this is the creek. I gotta tell you, man, I expected like a much kind of deeper creek. This is still not a ton of water. It's not, but I said that's all we had. Yeah. Just putting on a happy face, I'd be pretty pissed off. I mean, if we just walked around mad about everything that was going on, this just be one mad city. How y'all doing? Y'all doing all right? Tell me a little bit about what you're doing here today. Uh, well, uh, we uh, partnered up with various churches and individuals, friends of mine, who actually uh, uh, delivered all of this water and the water outside so that we could uh, continue to distribute in the city of Jackson. So most of this water has been donated? Yes. All, all the water that we have been distributed has been donated. Just personally, can you tell me what the last couple weeks have been like for you to see your community go through this? It has been an eye-opener. It really has revealed how uh, some of the rural areas within the city of Jackson have been neglected because you didn't see this problem in Madison, Mississippi, Rankin County, Pearl, Mississippi, or Clinton, Mississippi. We're talking about years, 20, 30 years of neglect. So uh, if it's not addressed, when the next uh, major uh, ice storm or cold weather comes, we're going to be dealing with the same thing. Can you tell me what you've been hearing from the people in your congregation about how they've been trying to deal with the situation? Initially, a lot of individuals, especially those senior citizens, they had to rely on, you know, church members, neighbors to, you know, find water and bring it to them. So there's a great deal of frustration because it changes your whole routine. Up. And no one ever would think that, you know, we would be in a situation where we had to find water yeah. in the 21st century in America. You don't expect this in America, in Jackson, Mississippi. 
the state capital of Mississippi. You just wouldn't expect that. I mean, the storm couldn't have hit at a worse time, right? Because we're still in the middle of a pandemic. I think God allows things to happen for a reason to show us or to show people uh, those areas that we need help and assistance in. Because had the ice storm not come through, then uh, the coverage would not have been revealed uh, over this problem because it will continue to be uh, neglected. How long are you guys prepared to continue to give out donations? As long as the water keeps coming in. You know, we don't know when the water is going to be drinkable. And then even when it is okay, you know, some individuals are still going to be reluctant to drink the water. We need to put pressure on our governmental officials because it's no excuse. I mean, if money can be made available, $1.9 trillion stimulus package, then surely money can be available to make sure the pipes are functioning. We need to put pressure on the governor and uh, those individuals in our state capital because this is ridiculous. <laughs>